Uh, now let's talk about the Royals. Uh, uh, well, let's go straight over to Talk Radio's Royal Correspondent, Rupert Bell. Uh, good morning, Rupert. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, the main thing I want to ask you, a uh, story floating around for a couple of days now, uh, but it bears discussion. Uh, due to nuances in the legal situation, Prince Andrew now believes he can definitely stage a full comeback to front-line royal duties. The reason for this is that Virginia Gaffray, uh, who, of course, he gave £12 million to, not to go to court because she accused him of sexually assaulting her on three different continents. Uh, Prince Andrew denies that, but nevertheless effectively paid her 12 million quid to shut up. Uh, well, what's happened is one of the other powerful men that she accused, the American lawyer Alan Dershowitz, uh, who she was suing, uh, he said, I'm not having this. I'm taking, I will go to court with you. She subsequently, only last week, turned around and said, uh, in fairness, I could have been wrong about Alan Dershowitz. I was young. I may have got this wrong. So that case has now been completely dropped. And Prince Andrew and his acolytes are now saying, well, it could be the same situation with Prince Andrew. She could have got this wrong. Uh, therefore, uh, I, Andrew now believes he can be rehabilitated. Now, my point would be, well, OK, fair enough, Andrew. Uh, but the question remains, why then, if you didn't do anything, uh, and it might be a case of uh, mistaken identity, why then did you give Virginia Caffrey 12 million quid? Well, actually, Kevin, that's a very good question. But I think there was a bit of pressure, particularly with the Queen in her latter years, you know, and at the end. And... Clearly, didn't it would have been if it had gone to trial? Um, well, it would have been everywhere. It would have been pretty salacious, unedifying, all sorts of things being banded around the court. Now, clearly, if he is innocent, then he should have tried to make sure that his name is cleared. But he has got himself into a, he's back himself into a corner. Now he's paid the twelve million. She doesn't need to do anything. I don't know how he's going to... He would have to go to court to get the money back. If, if, and, and again, so that will bring up everything. So wherever he is, he's now backed himself into a corner. And that is his problem. And actually, it's not whether he wants to be re rehabilitated. I think, actually, more to the point is, does the public want him rehabilitated? Now, he pro professes his innocence, but unfortunately... He is the bête noire of the royal family, a bit like Mike Hancock's the bête noire of uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Um, <laughs> he's in my brother's constituency, by the way, and he's been pretty vociferous about saying ah. something about Matt Hancock. But anyway, <laughs> we digress. But that, that is the point with Prince Andrew. And he is now back to, you know, he is now a prisoner in his house in Windsor. The public are not ready for him. Now, he says he wants to go out and do, be back with working with charities and his military associations. I mean, obviously, he was colonel um, of the Grenadier Guards and uh, he wanted to stay on doing that. He obviously feels he could make a contribution with regards to charity. But actually, I'm not sure charities want to be associated with him at the moment because he is he's perceived in the public eyes as poisoned goods. And it's as simple as that. And at the moment, there is no way back. And as we've seen yesterday with the and what's developing with regard to the councillors of state, he is again being sidelined from that. Although he's not losing his status, basically by bringing two more in, it avoids basically the royal family having to call on either Prince Andrew or Prince Harry to do the job. And that's further testament that with that being put in place, even less likelihood that he's going to find a, a public role now. Uh, so this amounts to the latest standoff uh, between Charles and Andrew. All their lives, these two have been having standoffs. Uh, you know, uh, Andrew, even before his problems with Virginia Caffrey, uh, was at loggerheads with Charles because Charles uh, made it his stated intention to slim down the royal family, uh, to actually uh, essentially uh, decommission uh, Beatrice and Eugenie. Uh, so Andrew was very unhappy with that. Then, of course, his problems. Now, Charles... Uh, we learned last week in an emotional showdown, uh, said to Andrew, I'm sorry, Andrew, 
you're over, you're finished, you just cannot come back to frontline royal duties. We're told that this meeting reduced Andrew to tears. Uh, so what do you feel about this? I mean, I, I've got to say, I don't like to see anyone reduced to uh, that level of distress, but I've got to say, I think most people will side with, Prince, with King Charles, you know, Andrew, when it's over, it's over. Uh, but that notwithstanding, it's as if Prince Andrew is in denial about the depths of his problems, isn't it? Well, yes, and that's part of his character trait. His arrogance has got himself in this position. And he still believes, with his so, a sense of entitlement, that he still has a role to play. Now, well, the king has taken it upon himself with a modern royalty, which, you know, events uh, out of his control, Andrew's um, behaviour uh, and arrogance, Harry and Meghan deciding to go to the States, it's brought it upon that actually, you know, the king's wish for a slim down monarchy has actually been um, put in place by by the action of, of these two uh, individuals and, and, and Meghan and, well, Andrew and then Meghan and Harry. And that's made it easier for the king. And he actually is very mindful of the state of the royal family is the king and how it is perceived with the British public. And at the moment, the, the king is fully aware that Andrew, Andrew is persona non grata. Harry is a more di complicated and difficult beast to deal with. He certainly is. Well, let's just talk about it. We've got a couple of minutes left, Rupert. Uh, extraordinary. Harry, Harry and Meghan have won uh, what's something called the Ripple of Hope Award for humanitarian work. Uh, what humanitarian work? What exactly are, are they being honoured uh, for this about? Well, on behalf of their foundation, I don't know what they've done. I'm sure they have given plenty of money about but clearly, uh, if you look at the previous role of honour, it fits very much in Meghan's political agenda to be going there. People paying a million dollars to go and sit at the top table. Uh, it does feel as if this is a big publicity moment for Meghan and Harry, and that's all it is. Yeah. And cashing in on their status as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in an American area strange yeah well uh it's par for the course i suspect uh, thank you very much rupert great to talk to you as always that's rupert bell talk radio royal correspondent there uh after the news we'll be talking about hospitals i mean they're at the center of this strike action by the nurses uh how will they cope uh, we'll be talking about that straight after the news i'm kevin o'sullivan this is talk tv live from the talk radio studios